Hi everyone. I am doing this video in hopes that it will share my story of how myself as a healthcare provider uh, contracted COVID and what I did at home to beat it and fight it. Um, <clears throat> my name is Crystal. I am a registered nurse and certified registered nurse anesthetist. I've been practicing since 2002 in healthcare. And although I am a medical professional, I do just want to say, please, if you do get COVID, um, get with your primary care provider, your health care provider, and go over your symptoms if you are having any and um, talk to them about your course of action. This is my personal course of action and what I did in order to kind of um, treat my symptoms and beat COVID in 10 days. So let me just start with a little bit of background about myself. So I'm healthy. I don't have any other comorbidities, meaning I don't have any lung issues, no asthma, um, no upper respiratory disease, um, no heart conditions. I am fairly healthy. I'm five foot two, 147 pounds or so. Um, I do uh, exercise daily at baseline. Um, I exercise anywhere from three to five days per week, uh, 30 minutes at minimum per day. And I usually do anywhere from um, cardiovascular, um, hit high intensity interval training uh, with some weight training. Um, but I do, like I said, do something pretty much every day of the week. Um, I also eat fairly healthy. I um, try to eat anywhere from 1400 to 1600 calories per day. I do keep track of kind of my intake and I try to have a 500 calorie deficit a day on my Apple Watch. So um, that's me at baseline. I get seven and a half to eight hours of sleep every night. Um, so I am in bed by like 8 p.m. most nights. I get up anywhere between 4.30 and 4.45 a.m. Um, most mornings. Again, I'm talking all pre-COVID. So I just wanna give you kind of a background about my health status prior to contracting COVID. Um, so I do get anywhere from seven and a half to eight hours at night uh, sleep at night. I meditate um, pretty much daily as well. So I really try to keep good, healthy practices. That has not always been the case for me. I have been obese in the past and I really do feel like um, had I still been overweight and unhealthy in the sense of I didn't exercise, I kind of ate whatever back then, I do think that um, I would have had a more difficult time recovering from COVID. I um, have two small dogs that are home with me and I say that because I did have to contact their vet. Um, and so I'll go over kind of everything I did um, to, like I said, fight COVID. Again, another thing at baseline that I do is I drink um, anywhere from 60 to 80 ounces of water daily. Um, so when I wake up, like I said, between 4.30 and 4.45, I start drinking my fluids then. Um, I drink anywhere from 16 to 32 ounces while I'm working out, 40 if I can. Um, but since I am only doing 30 minute workouts, sometimes 40 ounces may be a little bit difficult, but I do start drinking my fluids um, as soon as I wake up. I do also at baseline um, take a multivitamin. Um, this is immune support vitamin that I was taking. It has honey, um, vitamin C, zinc, and um, lemon. Um, this is also uh, vitamin D3 that I was taking. Um, this is 5,000 international units um, in two gummies. So I was taking six gummies a day for like 15,000 international units. Um, again, all pre-COVID. And then I also take a hair, skin, and nail um, gummy. I have also in the past taken the main choice hair vitamins. Um, these are just the ones that I have currently that I wanted to show you. Um, so I think that's kind of all the background again about me. I'm just looking down at my notes because I want to make sure I don't miss anything. Um, let's see. 
So like I said, I do work in healthcare. I'm a nurse anesthetist, so I'm in people's airways every day. That's my job. Um, if you don't want know what a certified registered nurse anesthetist is, we administer anesthesia for surgical procedures. And so we are the ones who put you to sleep. We're the ones who intubate you if you need intubation. We also um, have other airway devices that we can use if it's not a general anesthetic. So I'm right there in people's mouths all day, every day. Um, Monday through Friday. So that is my job. That's what I get paid to do. With that being said, I do wear a mask every day at work. Um, if we have a patient that either does not have a COVID test or tested positive and still needs their surgical procedure done, I wear something called a PAPR device, which is a big spacesuit looking thing. Or it has like a Ghostbuster looking pack. So I wear that for those patients. Um, when the health department called me to go over, um, kind of my symptoms and when I started feeling sick, we backtracked, um, to December 19th. So luckily for me, I really don't go anywhere, um, outside of work. Um, so when I looked at my calendar, there was only five places that I had been, and um, could have possibly been exposed to or exposed them. So um, the first place was a nail salon. Um, the second place was um, what, the place I go to get waxed. Um, the next place was a hair dresser that I had seen, um, my pet sitter, and then, oh, my massage therapist. All of those places I do wear masks, as do the other people, except for my pet sitter when I drop off the dogs. Um, it's an in and out quick exchange. So um, I didn't have a mask on, they didn't have a mask on, but I did tell them as soon as I started to not feel well and um, they got tested, they're fine thankfully because I really did not want to get anyone sick. That, I, that, I, that weighed heavily on my heart. So I'm so glad that they're okay. Um, so like I said, we went all the way back to December 19th um, to backtrack. December 25th, I did work um, Christmas. I haven't seen my family. Um, I haven't, um, you know, been anywhere or uh, kind of like hanging out or anything like that. I'm pretty much home or I'm at work, except for those um, other places that I just named. So backtracking was pretty easy when the health department um, did call me. Um, let's see. I, like I said, I worked Christmas, I worked New Year's Eve. The following day after New Year's Eve, um, I woke up that morning. So let me hold on backtrack. New Year's Eve, I got out of work early. I felt good. I had worked out that morning. Um, I worked out again that evening. I did the elliptical, which is different than my usual workout routine. So I was kind of tired, but nothing unusual the next morning i felt like a little pressure like right here in my chest so i kind of attributed it to i had done a new workout yesterday my breathing pattern was a little bit different than my previous workout so i was like okay maybe you know i just really exercised my lungs um last night on the elliptical so i'll keep an eye on it i worked out that morning um on January, on January 1st, I had gone to bed at like 10.30 the night before, so I really didn't think that I was sick. Um, I was a little tired, and like I said, it was just right here. Like, it's, it was like the faintest kind of dull, um, I was just aware that it felt like something was right there. Um, so, because I was kind of also sniffly, like, um, not really sneezing, just kind of had a little bit of post-nasal drip, I decided to cancel my massage appointment that I had for later on that afternoon. Years ago, I've been getting massages since I was 14, and years ago, I was told by a Chinese massage therapist, you should never get a massage um, kind of at the beginning of a cold because it was it will push it deeper into your body and make it harder for you to recover from it. And there was one time that I didn't follow that direction 
and I went and I got a massage when I was um, at the beginning with a cold and I ended up so sick after that. I got like bronchitis and walking pneumonia. I'm not saying that that's what made me sick, but I feel like I was sick a lot longer than probably necessary. And I don't know if it's because I went and had that massage done, but this time around, since I felt a little sniffly, we know that COVID's out, um, I didn't want to risk it. Might I also add that I was on vacation. This was the beginning of my 10 days off from work. I had not had a vacation since um, lockdown first started, like last March. So I have been really looking forward to this vacation, having 10 days off, not having to go into work, not having to get up super early in the morning, you know, chilling with the dogs and just kind of getting some things done around the house. So I was really excited about this. So God had other plans. Well, I did rest though. So I won't say God had other plans because honey, COVID will make you rest. Okay. So like I said, I canceled my massage appointment, but I was able to do stuff around the house. Like I did my laundry. Um, I think I cooked, I cooked some salmon and um, butternut squash that night. So I was like, you know, able to do stuff, but I also did rest. Um, sorry, just checking what time it is. Um, that night I didn't have a fever. I did, like I said, I didn't really feel bad. I just was aware of that kind of chest congestion in my chest. Um, the next day was Saturday. I was, I started sneezing more. Um, and this kind of dullness, what well, I was a little bit more aware of it. And I believe I started coughing that day. It's a dry cough though. It's not like a cough, like when you have mucus building up and you're trying to cough it up. It was truly like a dry, like like you had slept all night with um, the heat on high and you know your throat is dry the next day. Like that's what kind of dry cough it was. So nothing was coming up. Um, I didn't feel like anything was in my lungs. I actually went and got my stethoscope from the car and kind of listened to my lung sounds, which is a little bit more difficult to do than you would think. Um, but I sounded clear. So I was like, okay, let me just kind of keep an eye on it. I got some hard candy because again, it was just kind of like my throat was dry my chest felt dry, but not sore, not like a sore throat when you are coming down with the flu or something. It was just like dry. I don't really know how to explain it, but I didn't want water, which I drink a ton of water anyway, but it was just like a dry feeling. So I just kind of sucked on the hard candy. I was able to still eat. I still had an appetite. Um, well, yeah, I still had an appetite. Um, that evening, so this is Saturday evening now, um, I broke out the thermometer because I was like, you know, I felt a little bit warm, but I had the fireplace going. So I'm like, you know, let me kind of check and see what my temperature is. Now, baseline for me is 96.9, 97. I always run cold. If you know me, I'm always cold. If you come to my house, the heat's going to be on. Um, I'm the type of person, I'll go to Cancun or Jamaica and lay out in the sun. I love to be warm. I'm like a reptile, like I'm cold on the inside. So I just like to lay there and bask in the sun. So baseline for me, 96.9, 97 um, is like, that's pushing it. So that evening, I went ahead and I took my temperature and it was 99.4, 99.8. I can't really remember, but high for me. So I did take some Tylenol. Um, I went to bed and no, I didn't go to bed. This was like middle of the day. Took some Tylenol. Two hours later, my temp came down to like 98.6. Um, so I was like, oh, good, you know, the fever broke. Well, two hours after that, I took my temperature again before bed. I was 100.4. 
100.4 for me is high. Um, Cause like I said, I'm baseline 96, 9, 97 tops. So 100.4 is like emergency, not emergency, but you know, that's very high for me. So I went to bed that night at like 6.30 p.m. Took the dogs out, went to bed. Next morning, woke up. Oh, let me back up. So that I was taking night quill, day quill. So during the day I was taking this for my sneezing. Um, when I got the first temperature of 99.8 or 99.4 day quill um, before bed, this. Um, because it does have um, dextromethorphan in it and doxylamine, um, which is a antihistamine, so makes you a little bit sleepy. Also take Zyrtec. I take Zyrtec at baseline for allergies, so I did take Zyrtec, took my NyQuil, went to bed at 6.30. Slept all night, woke up the next morning. Um, my temp was 99.4. I was drenched, soaking wet. Um, was that the night? No, I think that was the next night. Either way, I was still, I still had a fever. Um, I chose to not wake myself up every two hours. Um, there's a post on Facebook that I had posted days before about a respiratory therapist and how she recovered from COVID. And she said she set her alarm to wake up every two hours to get up and move um, in order to prevent DVTs or pulmonary emboli, basically a clot from forming. I chose not to do that. That was my personal choice because I chose resting over waking up every two hours. I need my rest when I feel fine. So I know when I don't feel fine, I really need my rest. So again, my personal choice, I decided to sleep through the night. Um, the next morning, 99.4, took some day quill, um, got in contact with employee health at my job. Because everybody's like, you need to get tested, you need to get tested, you need to get tested. At first I really was like, why? Well, why? Because I'm on vacation anyway. I'll be home anyway. I can just stay home. But then I was like, well, let me go ahead and get tested in case I need additional medications, um, you know, in case this gets worse. So um, employee health contacted me. They sent me to get um, same day testing. I went at like 1115 that morning. I'll try to see if I can post a video of getting swabbed. Um, they didn't swab all the way to, you know, my brain, but they were pretty far back in my posterior nasal pharynx. Um, I had just eaten breakfast, so I'm actually really glad I didn't throw up because um, I videoed it. So that would have been embarrassing. But anyway. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Just want to make sure we cover all the surfaces. Good? Okay. Okay. They told me it would be 24 hours before I got my results back. <clears throat> my results came back, though, um, at midnight, like in the middle of the night, my results came back. But for the rest of that day, I continued my day quill um, and just really just managed my symptoms. Um, like I said, since that baseline, I take vitamins and um, drink water. I just pretty much kept drinking my hot teas and, you know, taking my vitamins and resting. I just kind of tired. Um, I was still able to take my dogs out. They go out three times a day, so I was still able to take them out. Um, and I would just be kind of like tired when I would walk them or come back up the stairs um, to our home. Um, but, you know, I would just sit down and quickly recover. Um, the let's see the next morning i think my temperature was still high that night i was 99 took some night quill went to bed the next morning um was when i woke up to my results being positive i think i woke up at like um 5 a.m 4 45 5 a.m um that was the morning i felt the worst so this is day Four, technically of when I when the symptoms started so I felt the worst 
I was drenched um, in sweat overnight. Um, my head was ringing and spinning. Um, I had a headache, like a really bad, like I woke up with a headache, which is extremely rare for me. Um, I, of course, had to do my thing with the dogs, like feed them, get them outside. So it took me a minute. I actually had to lay back down. I got really lightheaded and nauseous. Um, I had to lay back down. And one of my dogs just laid there, laid there with me until I felt well enough to sit back up. So I did something like um, for orthostatic hypotension. So laid down from laying down position, I sat up, just sat there for a little while until I felt um, strong enough to safely stand up. Um, so stood up, got myself together, um, got them taken out. And um, I believe at that point is when I decided to contact my PCP um, to let her know that I had the positive diagnosis, even though I knew it would be in my electronic chart. Um, and when I made the announcement that I had COVID, I was overwhelmed with the responses of care and you know people reaching out to me. I was also overwhelmed with the amount of this is what you need to be taking medication wise. Um, I felt like I had a pretty good regimen going prior to, but some people started sending me more and more information about like the DVTs, the microthermal emboli that can occur and you can, you know, have a clot in the lungs and things like that. So I reached out and you can develop pneumonia. Um, I believe pneumonia is what is causing a lot of younger people to pass away from COVID. Um, the, you know, if they already have a history of a lung issue, if they lay around, um, you know, if they're not up and moving, if they're not taking in fluids, we know that that can contribute to pneumonia. So I definitely didn't want to get a pneumonia. I contacted my PCP. She agreed that, um, you know, starting a Z pack wouldn't be a terrible idea. So she did put the prescription in for me for azithromycin. Um, <clears throat> that, that day, um, I was able to, you know, I, I rested a lot that day. Um, take the dogs out, let them do their business. We come right back inside. Um, the shortness of breath started to a little bit more so with exertion. So I started laying prone. Um, and prone means you lay on your stomach. Um, as an uh, intensive care unit nurse back in the day, um, we would prone patients who had ARDS or acute respiratory distress syndrome. Um, and that kind of, in layman's terms, it helps, <clears throat> excuse me, it helps expand the lower part of the lungs, the alveoli, helps get them perfused because with ARDS, there's something called a ventilation perfusion mismatch. So going prone for COVID patients has been a big thing because there's especially if they have a lower lobe pneumonia they're not being able to oxygenate um as well and that's when they're becoming cyanotic their oxygen levels are low and they're getting into respiratory distress so i took it upon myself to start sleeping prone um which is not normally how i sleep um, but i made it a point to um sleep prone i was doing deep breaths exercises um, hourly, if not more. I did not have an incentive spirometer at home, but I would take big inhales and do like a slower exhale, like a purse lip exhale to really try to keep um, the bottom portion, bottom portion of my lung especially open. Um, I would also when I did go outside, I tried to be out in the sun um, to get natural vitamin D and take really deep breaths while I was out there. Um, even if it was only a few, I was really trying to get fresh air um, into my lungs. Um, let's see. The I also started taking a baby aspirin at that time. Uh, one of my coworkers was nice enough to drop um, 
aspirin off to me and that was just to help with um, prevention of clots forming. So I was taking 81 milligrams of baby aspirin, which do I have that here? I do. So I started taking this um, in the morning. Uh, I already take a Meprazole daily because I have some reflux. Um, one of my coworkers wrote to me and said that I needed an H2 antagonist instead um, like Pepsid. I decided not to do that um, since I was already on the omeprazole and the baby aspirin, but that is something that they are telling patients to take is uh, Pepsid. The Pepsid is being used to decrease the inflammatory responses that some patients are exhibiting post-COVID. Um, there's very little research out there online, but I did find um, a few different when I googled the inflammatory responses that were seen in COVID patients afterwards. So that's what um, hospitalized patients with COVID are receiving is Pepsid. I did not take Pepsid. I decided to stay on my Nexium and um, yeah, but I just wanted to do that little caveat real quick about the Pepsid. I was able to eat my breakfast and lunch each morning. Um, something I had also started doing was lighting a candle every morning. I, li I like candles anyway, but I would light a candle in hopes that I wouldn't lose my taste or smell. I eat such small portions as is. I knew that if I lost my taste or smell, then I probably really wouldn't eat um, anymore. And I know that eating is fundamental, especially when your body's trying to recover from an illness uh, or this virus. So I would light a candle each morning, <clears throat> but it's the craziest thing. When I finally did lose my taste and smell, I didn't realize that I hadn't smelled the candle in hours. So on day four, or day five. I forget what day it was now. I'm trying to keep up on my notebook, but basically I was able to eat breakfast and lunch. I could taste that. Then at dinner, that's what it was, dinner time, 4.30, I, would, I took a bite and I was like, it took me a second to realize I couldn't taste my food. And then it took me a few more to realize, wait a minute, when's the last time I smelled anything? Because it's not like when you have a cold and you lose your smell, like, because you're stuffy. It's like your day is just normal and then you realize, I haven't smelled anything in hours or however long. So, my best friend was like, go sniff some bleach. <laughs> I was like, I'm not sniffing bleach. And she's like, no, just go see if you can smell the bleach. So, I went, took a sniff, couldn't smell a thing. Um, and... Food didn't taste bad. You know when you're sick and food tastes bad, it just has a nasty taste. For me, it was just, I could feel the temperature, like it was hot or cold. I could feel it in my mouth, but I could not tell you what it tastes like. It was the strangest thing. Um, so I, I was very sad when I lost my taste. Um, I announced it on Facebook and many people were like, giving me different regimens to try in hopes that it would come back um so the next day my co-worker she dropped off a pulse oximeter to me so this is the pulse oximeter i got it's from target it gives your heart rate and your um pulse ox i was 98 99 percent on room air um i think it costs like 30 dollars at target um, oh, also, this was the thermometer I was using. It's so funny. I had just used my FSA money to buy a bunch of stuff. And my first thermometer from Dollar General stopped working on day two of my fever. So, luckily, I had this brand new thermometer. Um, and I'm going to be getting rid of it <laughs> since it had COVID on it. Um, but... Uh, day five, my friend dropped the post ox off to me and she brought me some oranges. One of the things that people were saying was, oh, you can scorch an orange, which I've showed on my page. 
So you blacken the whole outside of this orange skin, right, on the stovetop or a grill. I don't have a grill, so I had to do it on my stovetop. Um, once it's completely black, you mash, you peel it, you mash up the orange, and then you sprinkle brown sugar on it, and you eat, and it's supposed to help get your taste buds back. Trying this orange thing again. This time I blackened the mess out of it. So let's see if this brings these taste buds back. Come back to me. I want you to. I tried it three different times. Um, you're supposed to wait 30 minutes. I could feel the orange in my mouth. I could taste maybe a hint of the brown sugar. 30 minutes later when I would try to eat food, nothing. So it unfortunately did not work for me. Um, my sister-in-law sent me some essential oils and inhalers, which, let's see. I don't have the essential oils. I don't have the essential oils there in the refrigerator, but um, one was called Breathe. It had a lemon, eucalyptus, and tea tree. And the other one was just straight up tea tree. These came separate um, with the cotton. So you put the cotton in here, you um, put the essential oil, and then you sniff, you inhale. And I can talk about that um, in a few. But anyway, my sister-in-law sent me that um, via Amazon to see if that would help get my taste buds back. Um, that night, I think I, um, I had, I had been fever free for like 24 hours. So I stopped taking the Tylenol because I wanted to see if I was fever free because I was, I was taking Tylenol or if I had truly broken the fever. Don't touch that. I'm sorry. I'm talking to my dog. So, oh, the other thing I forgot. I also started taking, um, this uh day one when i had just a little tickle this is elderberry and um i think it's just straight elderberry yeah some bucal um that i had so i did start taking that on day one of not feeling well um i will say this the fevers were the worst at night um because my extremities would be cold so like my hands would be cold my feet would be cold and I'd be sitting by the fireplace, like, shivering. And since I'm naturally cold, I'm like, you know, what is this? But when I started shivering, I was like, okay, let me go check my temperature. Um, and just, like, the aches, like, you just ache. Kind of like the flu, um, when you have flu aches and pains. So, um, I know one night I was just really, really uncomfortable because I was aching. I was shivering. My extremities were cold. I sleep under a heated blanket anyway. Um, so, I think... Um, that was like the night where the next morning I woke up and I was drenched in sweat. But um, when I lost my taste and smell, I had been fever free for like 24 hours. Um, I still tried to eat even though I couldn't taste anything because like I said, I know um, nutrition is huge in getting you back to health. Um, on day five and six, I had back pain like I can't even describe. It was at the lower part of like um my rib cage where my rib cage meets my waist and it was bilateral um meaning both sides and at first I was like well maybe it's because I've been sleeping on my stomach and that's not natural for me Ooh, it and like sitting hurt laying down hurt um move, getting up and moving around kind of helped but it was still there um, so then I started to get a little bit worried because I'm like, what if I have a small clot or something or I have the lower lobe pneumonia? So I um, contacted my PCP. She agreed to order a chest x-ray for me to kind of rule out any lower lobe um, issues. And so that was the first time I got in my car since testing and drove um, to radiology. I got a chest x-ray and actually it came back normal, thank God. So because it came back normal, I was able to stop taking my z -pack. Um I, I didn't wanna be on antibiotics unnecessarily. I know um, initially we had started it uh, prophylactically to kind of ward off uh, any evil spirits if a pneumonia was to develop, 
but since the chest x-ray was clear, um, both me and my PCP decided, and you know, I could stop it. Um, let's see. I never had diarrhea. I know a lot of people said that they did. I was actually constipated. Um, oh, the brain fog. So the first day I was fine, like nights two and three, I can kind of remember just being like, um, and maybe it was a fever, but just like forgetting things or like um, just feeling kind of out of it. So maybe it was the fever. I don't really know. But the brain fog, if you have that, it does go away. Um, let's see. Let me make sure I didn't forget anything. Um, on day seven, I woke up and I didn't have the chest pressure anymore. Um, that had kind of been, you know, since day one. But on day seven, I woke up, didn't have the chest pressure. I could taste sour, sweet, and salty. So, um, my tongue, so bitter, your bitter taste buds are all the way at, at the back. My bitter taste buds are immature anyway, because I don't like bitter things. But I noticed when I chewed, I could taste stuff if it was on the side of my mouth or the tip of my tongue. So I could taste salty, sweet, and sour. Not a lot, but I could taste. And then when I would chew and it would get to the back of my mouth, I couldn't taste anything anymore. Um, the back pain uh, was still still getting you know better with tol Tylenol. I started taking Tylenol again for the back pain. I don't do ibuprofen at baseline, so um, I was doing Tylenol and heat pack for the back pain. And day eight, I woke up, took the dogs out, meditated, and then I went right back to bed. I slept all of day eight. I was exhausted. Like, even the smallest thing was exhausting. Um, so, I slept a lot on day eight and my back pain was a whole lot better and remember I was sleeping prone still either prone or on my left side I would like prop myself up on my left side put a pillow way up behind me and um either sleep on the left side or face down so that was day eight <clears throat> um I also had just a little hint of a bat of a um headache and head congestion so like all right in here um just felt a little congested by then i was just taking the aspirin my nexium my zyrtec at, at night i was still doing the elderberry still doing my daily vitamins still drinking my tea um for mucus as you can see i never even opened this but i did have um this mucinex because a couple people had dm'd me and said that they really needed this for the mucus production. I didn't have any mucus. Um, my cough, my lungs, everything were dry, stayed extremely dry. Um, I don't eat a lot of dairy anyway. I know they say stay away from dairy when you have COVID because of the mucus production. So maybe that's why, but I never um, needed the mucinex. Uh, I also was told about ivermectin um it's anti-helminthic is the category that it's in and i think it's been shown to decrease the viral load in covid patients hospitalized covid patients um i talked to my pcp about it and we both agreed that um not to hold off on it um because i was on the up and up i didn't have pneumonia um, every day, every hour was different symptom wise, not just daily, like literally you could wake up, feel fine. And then an hour later, feel bad. And then an hour after that, feel fine. So, um, we agreed that because my oxygen levels were good, um, my, you know, my lungs down the clear, my chest x-ray was good not to start the ivermectin, but, um, that is something that the literature is showing has been helpful in decreasing the viral load of COVID patients. Um, <clears throat> by, by day nine and 10, um, the back pain had actually subsided. 
Um, day nine, I was a little bit um, tired as well. So I did sleep a lot too. Um, day 10 was yesterday for me. Um, no chest pressure, no headache. As you can see, I'm a little bit dry. Um, I have like a dry cough. And the most exciting thing about day 10 was I got my taste back. Um, it was the strangest thing because that morning, I remember waking up and saying, I think I smelled cookies <laughs> at like 6 a.m. There was no cookies. But I don't know if that was like my brain turning my sense of smell back on. So I got up, did my morning routine with the dogs, went to have breakfast. And I could taste just a tiny bit of my turkey bacon. And I was like, okay, turkey bacon's kind of salty. Maybe that's why I can taste it. Lunchtime came and I had made some chili that I had frozen and unfroze. And I took a bite and I was like, oh my God, I can taste my chili. Like it was a little spicy anyway. So I don't know if it was the spice. I don't know if it's the seasonings, but... I was just like, oh my God, I can taste. I was so excited. Um, I posted on Facebook and I realized I could also smell like I did a fresh lemon down the garbage disposal and I could smell it. I went and I sniffed my essential oils and I could smell it. Now I could smell on my left side a whole lot better than my right. My right was like kind of iffy. And I could also, the, the day before on day nine, I could also taste on my back part of my left tongue, <laughs> the weirdest thing. So I could smell the lemon. I could smell the essential oils on the left side, a little tiny bit on the right. I tasted my chili. So I was like, oh my God, I'm so excited. I can taste food again. Um, I've been able to taste my breakfast this morning. Today is day 11 for me. Um, I was also able to work out for the first time since getting diagnosed. Um, I did a 25 minute cardio with light weights, um, this morning. I didn't let my heart rate get up too high. It was only up to like 120, 125. Like I said, it was only a 25 minute video. I was a little winded afterwards, but, um, nothing too crazy. Um, I ate my breakfast, took my shower, did my morning, you know, routine, um, I did have to take a nap. I was a little bit tired by like 1130. So I took like a 45 minute nap, woke up and I've been feeling great ever since. So I was like, I really want to make a video, um, in hopes that some of the things that I did can help someone else. Um, I forgot to say one thing on day, I think it was the night of day three and day four, I was wheezing a little bit. Um, and so I had a Ventolin inhaler from an old respiratory, upper respiratory, um, infection that I had. So I did use, um, this, it had to be day four and five, because I remember thinking I couldn't taste the medicine on the back of my tongue. So I had to make sure I really brushed the back of my tongue because, you know, you don't want this sitting on your tongue. So because I couldn't taste it, I remember thinking I really need to brush my tongue really well. So um, I took that on those two nights only and in the morning of, you know, the following morning. And I haven't needed it since. Um, I feel good. I'm still taking my vitamins. I'm still drinking my tea now that I can taste my tea. Um, I was using natural honey um, in my tea. Um <clears throat> and i'm continuing to feel better i hope this video helps um i hope that we are seeing less and less cases of the covid i know somebody's going to ask me this so let me just address it somebody's probably going to say am i going to take the vaccine um so when i spoke to both the health department and the nurse practitioner at my doctor's office what we do know right now is people who have COVID have antibodies for about 90 days, nine zero. So I'm going to choose to use my body's natural um, immune response to um, ward off possibly getting COVID again. And I'm going to hold off on uh, injecting myself with the vaccine. 
So again, my personal decision about it, I will not be getting a vaccine at this time since I have natural immunity to it. I just want to address it because I know somebody will ask. So I hope we're seeing less and less cases. I hope this video helps someone. Um, please, again, speak to your personal care provider um, if you do get a positive diagnosis and start having symptoms. Um, please know that I'm praying for you if you do have it. it it's very scary when you do start <clears throat> getting the symptoms, but I'm here to show you that um, you can beat it. You can beat it, and uh, let's all beat this. I I'm tired to of it. mention real quick is about the pets. So I contacted my vet um, here. He's awesome. I've never met him in person, unfortunately, um, because when I moved, um, COVID was, you know, rampant. So I've sent the dogs there. He's very good with calling me and explaining everything he does. So I actually sent them an email and this is what he told me basically. And I'm looking down at my notes. So basically COVID is seen more in cats and ferrets. Cats can transfer it to other cats, but they don't, cats don't get sick from COVID. However, ferrets can get sick from COVID. I don't have either a cat or a ferret, but I figure that may help somebody. Um, there's not much research in dogs or pigs. For those of you who may have pet pigs, I know a couple people. Um, the virus can be, however, carried on the coats of the animals. But because animals' coats are more fibrous than porous, it's unlikely that it can spread from their coat to a human. However, since there's not a lot of research, they told me just be cautious. So because I was sick, first they told me, you know, keep the dogs as far away from me as possible. Let another family member walk them, feed them, you know, take care of them. That's not an option for me. They're with me, they're in my face all the time. Like if you see my videos, they're, they're everywhere I go. So getting them away from me was not an option. Um, it's just me and them. So I would take them for their walks, like I said, and the days that I was just really short of breath um, with exertion, we would go, they would do their business and we would come right back inside. Um, I didn't let people near them, which um, there's really nobody out when I'm walking them anyway, but I didn't want anybody to pet them. You know, if I had just coughed and it got on their their hair, because my dogs have hair, not fur, um, I didn't want somebody to go behind me and pet them and then get sick. So we stayed far away from most people anyway when we were out and walking. I kept them home with me from the pet sitter. I, like I said, I did contact my pet sitter and told them I was sick. They actually opted to both go get tested. And um, thankfully, their COVID tests were negative and they were fine. And they have felt fine the entire time. Um, let's see. The only other thing I can say that the vet's um, email said was there's a greater, greater risk of um, viral contamination of cat fur since cats are self-grooming um, than dogs. So if you have a cat, just be, um, you know, more cautious and more vigilant that they could get it from another cat and then come and bring it to you, I guess. Um, but it's unlikely that someone can get the virus from petting an animal, but again, they're still researching. So I just wanted to add that part in about the dogs. The dogs are fine, they did great. Um, they were happy to have me home the whole time. So I hope, hope that helped.